Pottawatomie County Jail in Council Bluffs, Iowa was constructed in 1885 at a cost of $30,000. More often called the Squirrel Cage Jail, it is notable due to its cylindrical rotating cell block. It is one of only three remaining jails built in this style, and the only to have a three-story structure. Designed to hold a large number of inmates with minimal supervision, each floor only has one entrance and exit. This means in order to empty all cells, such as in the case of an emergency, the entire cylinder needed to rotate. This process took a minimum of 20 minutes, assuming the cylinder did not jam, which it often did. As a result of this hazard, and the fact that inmates would often be injured by the mechanism, the fire marshal deemed the structure uninhabitable in 1960. The cylinder was welded in place, and doors were cut into each cell, allowing the facility to operate more like a conventional jail up until its closure in 1969. Recognizing the building's significance, the County Historical Society acquired the building in 1977 and has maintained it as a museum ever since. On October 10th, the Ghostorical Investigations team journeyed to Council Bluffs to explore this location in an attempt to capture the paranormal phenomena that some claim to experience. Our team entered the jail hoping to focus on one specific period of its history, one which we feel left a permanent mark. In 1932, at the height of the Great Depression, the jail became the epicenter of a movement known as the Farmers Holiday Association Strikes. These strikes, organized by farmers who were tired of low crop prices and farm foreclosures, aimed to push for legislation that protected agriculture during the economic collapse. While some demonstrations resorted to violence, more often, groups would gather to block off roads, cutting off major agricultural trade routes. One such demonstration took place in Council Bluffs in late of August 1932, cutting off traffic from Omaha and Sioux City. Sheriff P. A. Laneson of Pottawatomie County considered this form of protest illegal, and as a result, arrested 84 picketers, saying, If the jail bulges, it will have to bulge. With a jail full of demonstrators and rumors circulating of an angry mob of over 1,000 farmers coming to free them, the days following the arrests became increasingly intense. The sheriff's department set up a no-man's land around the jail and hired 98 special deputies, armed with batons, and later guns, to protect it, paying each a sum of $3.50 per day, about $70 in today's money. Before the powder keg situation could erupt, the sheriff, mayor, and police chief called a peace conference with the group's leaders. After negotiations, both sides agreed on de-escalation, and shortly thereafter, many of those jailed were bailed out. Unfortunately, this situation did not come to an end without bloodshed. On August 25th, while several deputies were training on the use of a riot gun, the weapon accidentally discharged, striking one deputy and mortally wounding Special Deputy Claude Dale. Dale had served the department for only three days. Locations have a way of telling their story, even when no one living remembers it. We feel that the phenomena we experienced in this jail were trying to do just that. We will now share some of our video and audio from that evening. A little farther. Can you do it a little farther? Now do the left one and do the same thing. Can you do the same thing with the left one? Did I just hear somebody breathe? Did I just hear somebody breathe? Can you give us a bang? Can you bang on your door? The wall of your cell? Do like I'm doing.
I know there that. is the one light switch for the light in the room. And there is an alley outside the door or the window here with electrical wires here with electrical wires through which The farmer's holiday of 1932. The farmer's holiday of 1932. Tell us what floor? That's the 